So where will it, so where will it go in after the people's money? And many will say he just making a statement, but like billions of dollars wasted in the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago hands and in his PNM government hands, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago have now decided to go after private sector hard earned money in the banks. There are many in this country whose accounts are in surplus. It's the observation of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley who believes these idle resources can be put to better use for the benefit of all. Even as the Minister of Finance is telling you that the overdraft is up to 80% and 90%, there are people in this country with significant cash reserves in the banks of this country. Money sitting in the bank belonging to A, B, C, or D is not helping us. But if that money is put to work on projects, it creates a multiplier effect and is put to work. It doesn't matter who owns it. It is not only the government that owns money in this country. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a guess here, because I haven't read the documents on that for a little while. I'm sure the private sector owns much more money in this country than the government. And many of them make significant profits every year. And you ask yourself, really? What do they do with those profits? Imagine a Prime Minister Trinidad and Tobago, which we know is really a, he's a dictator, watching your money in your account and telling you that we should give the government instead of having your hard-earned money lie down there in the bank. That's your savings to pass on to your children. He talk about AGC and the amount of rent the spelling on AGC, the, the AGC head office in Port of Spain, which is not a government building. But he ain't talking about the set of millions. It is okay to spend a set of millions in, in rent in Faris and his family. The hands. He ain't telling all about the San Fernando waterfront where, where Faris and his family own a set of land where we know the San Fernando waterfront will truly be profiting Faris and his family. He ain't talk about these things, but he wanted to talk about all your money. Why he ain't go and ask Faris them to give them back the, the tax paying money that we're spending in rent so the government they finance us? No, because I'm very sure he's not going to be in Trinidad to be going to need to get real. Because I'm going to tell you something. He want to come after rooted millionaires. We're talking about Africans and Indians. We ain't talking about Syrians here. We know what is the plan. So I want to say something to, to my private sector people. Just know you'll be watching all your account too. It's sit down in the bank. There will be real Trinidad and Tobago. He removed the SSA head. He put in a president he could control. He put in a commissioner of police he could control. He trying to control the EBC. And he trying to control other high stakes government bodies to seal the dictatorship. We the people must not let this happen. How do you feel that the people at Trinidad and Tobago control any PNM government? Pushing hard and pass policies for those digital platforms to go fully digital when it comes to our money in Trinidad and Tobago. Make it electronic. So now the government could just go into your accounts that they find dormant and you ain't doing nothing with your money or investing your money. They could now go into your accounts and pull your money out of your account. No different from the property tax. They, they don't have to wait on you to, to, to cover your payments. No, if they find you, you playing the fool. The government through that digital system could just go and pull the property tax out of your accounts. So they don't understand this. And this is why I will never agree with going fully digital in Trinidad and Tobago. The paper money, it has leave trails. And poor people... Most poor people do have reached a digital system or know how, how to use it. So this man planning and planning and planning to seal the dictatorship. As we know in Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro is going to be out very soon. Table. Yeah. Can you believe they have a bill on the table? That can possibly close down all Federal Reserve banks. Which will mean you will wake up to zero 
in your bank account. Now you know this just happened to Cuba. All of their banks went to zero. Citizens woke up and couldn't get a dime. It sounds like we are about to go into a massive reset. If they pass this bill, it's about to get crazy. It is about to get crazy in the United States. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweshai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, beginning with the 144,000 men. You know, the name of this episode is They Are Coming for Your Money. All right? They are coming for your money. You know, your defense. All right, and who are we talking about by that? We're talking about the global banking elite. You know, in Trinidad, we have the local elites which are linked to those global banking elites. You know, who own a portion of the banking system here in Trinidad and Tobago. All right, and this is what they're doing. The elites in the U.S. and around the world in Trinidad and Tobago included, they're tightening down. Right, knowing that they have a short time, they're now coming with these, these, um, these draconian laws and these different bills, which we've seen a lot of them lately, you know, basically coming against the truth, against the preaching of the gospel, banning the back to ban the Bible, all right. And now, you know, basically, they want to touch your money, <laughs> you know, in the banking system, all right. And this is what this is where it's going. You know, after they done spent all that deficit money, you know, basically that thick clay they talk about in the book of Habakkuk, all right, the second chapter, you know, which is basically debt financing. You know, uh, from all the loans that, that they would have taken from the, the IMF, the World Bank, um, and Trinidad and Tobago, in case the Chinese, you know, now as you saw, the Prime Minister and Trinidad and Tobago say, coming for the money. He say, he say, you know, these money, they're sitting idle. Basically, they want to lay their hand on your funds. <laughs> and this is, um, this is the reality for Jake, who in the world and think everything is nice and everything is going to continue. Who think that they know they 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 make them a little bit of money that they have in the bank, the they, they crumbs, which they got from the master's table in the bank, you know, substantial, and they will be all right, and you know and whatnot. No, they're not going to be all right. These devils have a new world order agenda, socialism, basically, you know, with them on top, and they coming for it. They coming for you, you know. Um, the guy was talking about passing on your money to your children. Hell, this is the last generation. These jakes. They don't know what the hell time frame that they're in right now. They don't know what time period they're in. Alright? But these devils now, they're about to come down with great wrath. Alright, let's get the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 12. You know, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, right, you Edomites. Woe, so-called white man. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Right, one to you, people of the earth, of the, of the, of the different countries, so-called countries of the world. For the devil, so-called white man, is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So this devil know he have a short time. Therefore, you have to what? You have to come with his agenda quick. One of the main agendas is taking away your defense. As the scriptures say, uh, uh, money is a defense, wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. And I got that precept in the last video I did. Let's get here again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. It says, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So money can't give you life. All right? But wisdom can give you life. All right? The fear of the Lord. Okay? Now well, let's get this word defense. Defense. It says the action of defending or resisting attack. All right, protection, shielding. 
In other words, uh, uh, um, the attacks that these devils are bringing, you know, um, money, money would usually provide a certain amount of protection, a certain amount of um, defense, you know, guarding against the attacks. Okay, like, um, for example, being able to purchase a house, you have the walls which prevent an attacker or a thief from breaking through and stealing. But it's not going to be able to help you because they have things like now, like a property tax, where eventually they're going to own all the property, property as um, this guy from, from the WEF, right? Um, Klaus Schwab said, you know, he said, you know, you, you, you'll own nothing and be happy. So, you know, you, you know you, you're going to own nothing. You know, anybody going to be eventually going to be breaking in your house. All right, whereas these devils going to go into the bunkers, Jake going to have to be in their houses. Right, so they're going to break into your house and they're going to come to spoil your goods, spoil your wife, your children. This is where this is where it's going. All right, so they, Jake not going to have any protection and they're not going to be able to resist their attacks because they're not going to have any money. Right, and that's for those who don't make wisdom their, their defense. All right, so if, in the first place, the money was fiat anyway. All right, gold and silver is the true money. All right, gold and silver. Lord said the gold is mine and the silver is mine. All right. So these devils, you know, hey, they come in fear. And mind you, they're not touching the elite's money. It's your money. It's the so called small man, little funds they're going to touch. You know, because there's a lot of corruption going on with these politicians. And they know that the whole system is about to crash. They're going to orchestrate the crash of the stock markets, you know, which, is, which wouldn't be hard because of the huge debt that's owing in all these countries around the world. Especially Babylon the Great and even Trinidad and Tobago. Alright? Now let's get a precept here. Let's get the book of um uh Zephaniah chapter one and verse ten. It reads And it shall come to pass in that day say at Yahweh, Bashem Yahweshai, that there shall be a noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills, the different rulerships. All right, one after the other, we hear the banks were crashing, stock markets going to crash, and these, these various countries' economies are going to crash. All right, like dominoes. It says, how the inhabitants of Maktesh, which is a merchant city, right, known for, um, for, for, for silver, it says, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off, right? And the bricks going to be a major part of that, with the, the gold and um precious metals back currency all right it's gonna it, it's already happening you know and they're gonna dump that us dollar and once they dump that us dollar guess what's coming hype inflation you know and um the crash of the economy all right so what are you gonna, they're gonna do they're gonna come they're gonna take taking your money first before that all right they're gonna start to put their hands into your bank accounts all right it says um verse 12 it says on um and I shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lease, the men who are not doing this work, who complacent, that say in their heart, Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil. So the Lord is going to disappoint them by making the prophecies come to pass, by making this devil come down with great wrath. And for you men, you know, who, who fell out of this truth, you know, who went back into the world, you know, basically to... to, to, to to plow you ply your business, ply your trade, you know, open up your shop. Alright? You know, Yabashim Yosha is gonna is coming for you. He's coming for you. Alright? And 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 Babylon and all these countries like Trinidad and Tobago have been bankrupt for a long time. You know, financially we're talking, but also morally. You know? And the Lord was the one who made them uh, in every work thereof. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 14. It says what? The Lord had mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, right? So these, 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 the, the, the financial system was perverse. It's, it wasn't balanced. It was a false balance, which is what an abomination inside the Lord. And of course, the morality, the morality going back into, you know, the um, the cup of abominations that Babylon the Great spew, you know, all over the world, and it made every nation to follow. All right, Jeremiah fifty one and seven. Right, so the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. This is not speaking about ancient Egypt, 
is speaking about spiritual Egypt, America, according to Revelation 11 chapter, right? Uh, according to uh, Second Ezra 15 chapter, all right? To earn every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit, all right? Staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail branch or rush may do. So where are you going to get your money from? They're going to take all your money from the bank and you're not going to have any job to make any money either. So what are you going to do then? All right? That's the question for you, Jakes, out there. All right? You know, these devils are leaving you with no defense. These politicians, they sold out. You do, you, that goes without saying. You know, they're bringing that digitalization. They're doing everything that the slave masters telling them to do. All right? And they, they're going to, best believe, they're going to reach into your bank accounts and steal your money. Because that's, that's, that's what they're going to do. They are thieves. All right? The book of Exodus, they've been stealing from you your taxes. All right? They come, they come, in, they come in now into your bank account. Exodus, which is supposed to be um, untouchable, right? <laughs> Exodus 20, verse 15, it says, Thou shall not steal. All right? But they're going to do it. All right? You know? The guy said, the, the Prime Minister and Trey and the Bego said, it doesn't matter who owns it, who owns the money. Alright, so they're going to go into your account, they're going to pull out your money, you know, they're going to they're gonna touch your, your finances, uh, I, I, with their, every woman fancy, whatever they, whenever they feel like. Alright, and this is what these devils, this is what the New World Order is about. Alright, this is what the New World Order is about. Let's get the book of Isaiah, chapter 10. So like here. Let's go here, Isaiah chapter 10, and let's start at the wrong 13 verse. It reads, For he saith, and this is going back, going back to the Assyrians, right? Uh, the king of Assyria, going back into what America, first and foremost, but the banking elites, the banking elites who run the world. It says, For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, which the scripture talk about Esau is wiser than Daniel, right? For I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, right? So all these so-called uh, uh, countries uh, that have boundaries, no, it's going to be one, one world order. It doesn't matter the name of the, cur the currency, the digital currency that they bring in, right? It's going to be one global banking digital currency, all right? And I've robbed their treasures. Their tre <laughs> this is what they're doing, right? You have, I've robbed their treasures, and I've put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So nobody, um, nobody even going to ask a question. They're going to all obey. All right. And my hand had found as a nest the riches of the people. Right. They're going to go into your money. Right. They're all your riches. Right. That you thought you was going to hand down to your, to your children or to your children's children. No. No. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to get all of it. All right. This is why the Lord said to store up your treasures where moth and in fact, let me get it where moth and rust, right? This is why the reason why the Lord said this, all right? Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust that corrupt. They're not saying that you don't save for a rainy day, but you don't put your store in these things, all right? And you don't store up. What are you storing up for? When you know the prophecies, where you have brothers and sisters in need, you give, you share. And I have charity covered from that. All right, roughly paraphrasing. It says, We are mud and rust that corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither mud nor rust that corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. So, in other words, in the NLT it says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also known. You, you, if your heart, which is your mind, is in the treasures of the earth, you're going to obey everything these devils say because you don't want to lose it. All right? But if your treasures be in heaven, who are you going to obey? You're going to obey Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Your fear is going to be well placed. All right? You know, you know you're not going to fear this devil. You know, but most Jake, you know, they, they, they're given to this worldly pleasures. All right? But the scripture also says that this will pass it away. And that's what they don't understand. Uh, 1 John 2. And verse, uh, I believe it's 1 John 2. Is it 15? Yeah, it says, um, 
First John 2 and 15, they, they love money. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in, in the world, so, that, so that's your love, your mind, where your mind is, where your heart is, that's where your love. Right? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Yeah, these jakes want a nice house, a fancy car. Uh, they want all the hoes, all the bitches. All right? You know, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Right? So all what, all what you've been looking for, all what you've been saving for, you know, saving, some people saving, um, you know, um, for the pension to, to relax, to go on a boat cruise, all of that is going to come to nothing. All of that is vanity. All right? Same way the, 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 the pensions are disappearing. And this is not new. This is what these devils been planning from the earlys. In the book that um, um, Satan's angels expose, the Apostle Tower goes, in it, goes into it now and then. All right? It goes into all these things, which, which we're going to touch on briefly. It says, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Heavenly Father abideth forever. So the Lord, one who does the will of the Heavenly Father, whose mind is in heaven, the heavenly things, right? You know, you will know what abide forever. You know, and these devils, this is what this is what they be doing. They 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 reach, they get you, um, you, you you're gonna get reach into your accounts and take out your goods. So if you don't have that that grounding, and if you if you if you um if your faith and your mind is not well placed, you know, you're gonna be you're gonna be sadly disappointed. Alright, it says Isaiah 10 and verse 14, it says, And my hand had found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, I have gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. This is how Esau thinks. So he's gonna cast, you know, the rest of money you have, you're gonna cast in the streets because it's gonna be worthless. Alright? This is what it is. And I have a question, and the question is. Where is your spiritual bank account reading? Because these devils, they're going to take all your money. So, so where is your spiritual bank account reading? All right? No man can serve two masters. Right? Either we love one and hate the other. You cannot serve the Heavenly Father and Mammon. All right? You can't serve both. So make up your mind, you know, what you're going to do. And that's going to be determined your future. All right? Very shortly. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Verse 9, verse 10, it says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. And this is what the innocent represent, Jake. Right? Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, right? Leave them without no defense. Uh, all right? This is what these devils are going to do. And they're going to flee into the bunkers. All right? And leave you in a world full of turmoil and a, ter a terrible world. A dystopian world. It says, And whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all the precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Right? They're going to go into you and take all your goods. Cast in thy lot with us. Let us all have one purse. And this is what these wicked politicians, these wicked jeeks, including the Prime Minister, Trey and Tobago, this is what they do. Alright? But the Lord warned us about that. He says, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from thy from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed innocent blood, right? Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, right? Because these jakes they you know they, they don't understand um what's going on and behind the scenes where even in China they have the digital digital um infrastructure being implemented right now as we speak. Alright? But well, they don't understand that because they, they what they can't see. You know, they, do, they, they have no vision. They have no vision. The scriptures say, for lack of vision, the people perish. And this is why each Jake's going to die. It says, and they lay wait for their own blood, verse 18. Right? They look privily for their own lives. This is what's going to happen. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which take it away the life of the owners thereof. And these, these Jake's who do this, who facilitate in this, they have a woe be unto them. Woe be unto them. All right, and these wicked jakes who who who, who um believing in the system, you know, they, they they have that love of money. 
which which is the root of all evil the scripture said that first timothy 6 verse 10 it says what <coughs> so like here for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows right they pierce them through with many sorrows they, they love not money and they fear man they fear esau edom which the lord said don't fear them uh proverbs proverbs 29 and 25 it says the fear of man bringeth a snare a trap a dangerous trap as the nlt says but whoso put at his trust in Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai shall be saved. And what was and what did the Lord say? What did the Lord say? Um, is the be all and end all? Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen. He said what? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, which is the Most High, the Heavenly Father. We didn't say the fear man, right? And keep His commandments, for this is the duty of man. And this is this is why these chicks. They're going to go and take that sea hip, that 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 um mark of the beast. They're gonna take it. Because they fear man and don't fear your bashim your shy because it is a sin to take that, to put that karma on their skin. Right? So these jakes, they're gonna be snared in this evil time. Alright? Ecclesiastes 9 and 12 says, For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net. And as the birds that are caught in, his, in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when it falleth suddenly upon them. So, you know, if they could have seen, they would, it wouldn't be sudden, they would understand, but only the elect will understand, you know, the sign of the times. And only the elect is going to repent and be converted. All right, so this parable in Israel, that the, that the effect of every vision feel it, is going to be disappointed. All right, it's going to be disappointed, all right? And these jakes going to have no, 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 no choice, because why? No, no, they were not going to have no, uh, no covering, no defense, because why? They seek to Egypt, all right? They seek to Egypt, as the book of Isaiah tells us, Isaiah thirty, verse one. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. All right, that they may add sin to sin. I'll have to decline that call. That they may add sin to sin. All right, and um, right. So that's what they do. They add in sin to sin. They walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and trust in the shadow of Egypt. And trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be their shame. And the, tru and the trust in, in, sh in the shadow of Egypt. Your confusion. So it's going to be your confusion. It's not, things not going to go well with you. You didn't listen. Alright. John chapter 3 verse 31. Yeah. Um, yeah it says. Um, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. Alright? He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that the heavenly Father is true. Alright? For he whom heavenly, heavenly Father hath sent speaketh the words of the heavenly Father. For the heavenly Father giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. So when the Lord sent his prophets, you know, you know, who, who have the Spirit of Yahweh Shai, and they didn't listen. You know, they didn't listen. So, so, so you're going to be in a bad state soon. Okay? You're going to be in a bad state soon. Alright, and I'll just get quickly, um, there's some excerpts from the book Satan, the Angel Expose, where Thomas Jefferson basically says, um, and in fact, I'm going to go straight to the point because um, the essence of time. All right, I'm going to go to camp. I'm going to leave here in a couple of minutes. Lord willing. All right, um, 219. It says um, the tragedy of Executive Order 11921 is Executive Order 
basically for emergency banking regulations, where they could seize your money. It says, perhaps you did not realize that the U.S. government can freeze your bank account. The president now has the power to announce the existence of a national emergency via Executive Order 11921 since in 1976. These orders have behind them the, face, the force of the law, which could be used to establish a federal dictatorship. Under these orders, federal agencies can control all food supply, control all money and credit, control all transportation, communication, public utilities. All right. And um, all this can come into being by the president merely signing a piece of paper that is a national emergency exists. Under the emergency banking regulation number one, if this was to occur, your bank accounts would be immediately frozen, both checking and saving. You could be prohibited from making any withdrawals of cash. You could be prohibited from writing any more checks without the bank's approval, except for customary accounts. The bank would, would decide what is customary. No checks will be honored by any bank or any unauthorized put. So this thing is going to get real. They're going to be able to take your funds. All right. And that, that's what you have to understand. They say no joke. And they're not making it out of here. But true, you have a bash him, you shy. This is Psalms 146. Psalm 146, verse 3. It says, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His bread goeth forth, he returned to the earth, and that very day his thoughts perished. Now I'm going to read this in the NLT. Psalm 146 and 3. It says, Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. Right? In these, these Babylonians. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. And the new world are going to fail. They're going to be almost accomplished, and the Lord is going to come, and He's going to destroy it. All right? Verse 5 says, But joyful are those who have the power of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in Yahweh, their power. Right? Because that's where you really have the defense. He's our helper. The name of Yahweh Shai is a powerful help. It's a powerful help. The Lord, He's our helper, not, not money. You know, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So I pray this lesson was edifying. Repent now, for it's too late. They're about to put their hands on your money. Shalom and Abad Babal.